Hey guys, so welcome back to an interesting video in Wild Rift. So they're back with a Sivir commentary guide, and I'm gonna toss the build and runes as well as the spells uh, up right now. Um, the reason why I'm doing a commentary guide and not like a basic guide or a complete guide on Sivir yet is because at this point I've only played like, I think like three games on Sivir, so I really don't know the ins and outs of Sivir just yet. So I didn't feel like this justified, you know, any kind of, uh, of detailed guide, but I will of course do a short commentary guide video uh, just like 15 minutes or so and of course I will go through with you guys what I have learned so far and what uh, you know it's all about so first up you know we're, we're immediately just in lane we just get a first minion you can see Thresh and uh, Tristana both coming in we actually get a Q onto both of them and here we're actually able to get a lot of free hits on Thresh Thresh is taking a pounding here um, he tries to ignite me he's really low I'm going for the Q flash combo which is a combo I Basically realized you could do literally right at this moment. I didn't know if it would work, but I just tried it anyway. Uh, this is a ranked match, but uh, you know, um, limit testing on Silver and just trying to see what she can do because this is this was like my second match on Silver, I believe. Um, so I really didn't know if Q Flash would work, but I thought that logically it would, so I just did that. So um, Silver, honestly, in the early game is not very strong, but at the same time, she's not very weak. So what do I mean by that? Basically, in the early game, her main point of damage is her Q. So in lane, your Qs are going to hurt a lot. And uh, in late game, you're basically, you basically don't really even want a Q because your Q in late game um, actually does less damage than if you just stand still, still and auto attack. The only thing is that it has more range. So if you have someone outside your range that you need to hit, then you can use Q. But otherwise, it's better to just stand still and auto attack. So her W, the ricochet um, thing, uh, basically, it can be strong in lane. Uh, but you can also misuse it in lane, because so, if you just spam your ricochet, you're going to just push in. And as a saver, you don't really want to push in yours. It's not really like a Caitlyn or anything like that, so you don't want to shove people in. So you only really uh, want to use it you know, at appropriate timings. And I haven't yet figured out like when it's good to and when it's not good to uh, pop the W. But what I have noticed, both playing as and against saver, I've also played against saver on like two matches. Um, what happens is a lot of times... Uh, if the enemy team stands close to the minions, they will get a lot of poke. Like, there is non-negligible damage from your W, so if they stand too close, they're going to be taking a ton of poke. And of course, they don't really want, uh, of course, to do that. So um, that is useful for like uh, getting priority, or it is also useful for, of course, just poking the enemy uh, out. A little bit like what I was uh, kind of trying to do here uh, with my trading. So Sivir's attack range, really, really short. It is the second shortest attack range. Shortest attack range is Lucian as well as... Uh, Samira. She has the second shortest attack range out of all ADCs if you don't count Nyla. Um, she has the second shortest attack range, same range as Tristana at level 1. So at this point, Tristana already outranges me because she gains 10 range per level, but she has the same range as Tristana level 1. So pretty crap range, which is of course part of um, how Sivir works. I actually just stand still there because I wanted to test the spell shield, but he doesn't actually even hit um, the, the, the hook there. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, of course, it's the way Sivir works because she's meant to really attack the front line and ricochet to the back line, so she is designed to not have long range on purpose. Anyways, here Tristana and Thresh both get bubbled and we're able to get a, or rather, we don't get an early kill, but Xin Zhao gets an early kill. Here I'm actually trying to, to uh, get the kill onto Thresh as well, but unfortunately, we don't uh, quite get it. So, another thing I think that the main two parts about Sivir that's really hard to play is really her spell shield and her ultimates. Of course, the spell shield you have to be really good at timing. Uh, you know, when you want to pop the spell shield to block uh, crucial spells, which I did manage to do in, a, in another match where I was play playing against a Blitzcrank. I was like just blocking his hooks uh, all the time, blocking his knockup, that, that, sort of, that sort of thing. But of course, you also have times you're caught off guard, you just get hooked or, or, or you get hit by a crucial spell and, you know, that's kind of no good, um, of course. And the ulti is also a really interesting one. Of course, you give your, your team a team-wide boost. You can use it to run people down. You can use it to escape. It's basically like a ghost for your entire team. And of course, you also have that mechanic where it gives you AD. And it also, uh, of course, allows you to uh, reactivate it when you hit a certain amount of stacks. So really, really interesting stuff um, overall, of course, from Sivir. So here we can actually see the Kha'Zix in the bush here. He actually got caught on vision sneaking in. So here I was testing if you can spell shield Tristana's bomb. And the answer is yes. So here I spell shielded Tristana's bomb and not only immune the damage but also uh, gain health back. So I actually healed from Tristana's bomb which is pretty, pretty, pretty nice. So here again the ricochet damage. Uh, not a lot of damage yet because we don't really have a lot of items. Uh, but it did do a little bit of poke, just a little bit to Thresh and Tristana. And um, so in this particular game, I'm went, I went for like a, a full no, uh, no attack speed, full AD kind of build. Right, so... 
Um, I'm not sure if this is the best build yet. Now here, unfortunately, I tried to spell shield, but it doesn't quite uh, work out. Unfortunately for Echo, he gets caught and he dies. Thresh now dies too. And here I'm trying to survive uh, Tristana's bomb, and I barely actually managed to do so. I'm just I'm just using the ult to now just run away and back. Um, really good play by the Nami to get that huge bubble and allow uh, us to not only survive, but actually just pick up two straight kills. So. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not quite sure if this is the best build for Sivir yet, which is obviously why I'm not making a, a complete guide on it yet. So I'm, I went for, of course, as you guys saw, Bloodthirston, Avori, um, IE, and um, Mole Reminder. Of course, I don't have to explain IE and Mole Reminder, but basically, Bloodthirster did get nerfed, but I still think it's a very strong item. And Avori is really, really good on Sivir because it pretty much makes your spell shield cooldown really low. It also makes your W cooldown really low, so you can pretty much have a perma W uh, turned on, which is uh, really amazing and really increases her damage output. So now, the, there's an issue with this build, which is that there's no attack speed. So I found out that, you know, I've taken Legend Lacrity and Lethal Tempo, but I don't think that the attack speed is enough. So maybe I have to swap out one of my items for an attack speed item. Now, the other alternative is also a lot of people are studying Shield Bow on Silver, because Shield Bow got a huge buff, of course, um, you know, just a couple days ago. And because of that, actually, the Shield Bow is not really strong, because it basically gives you more shield when you get it as a first item, compared to when it even released. So when it released, it gave you like 200 uh, shield when you first got it, and then it then scaled up, uh, of course, to, um, I think, like, 700 at when you reach max crit. Now it's like 600, which is still really good. So I think Shield Bow is going to be a really good item for ADCs now. So here, the whole enemy team is committing to uh, mid. So here, I'm actually just taking a complete free tower. I was thinking of backing off because I saw Echo hit it, hit it down, but I decided to commit to the tower because I had uh, my spell shield, I had my ghost, and I had my ulti. So I really think if Echo comes for me, I can just spell shield the stun and just run away with my ult and my ghost if necessary. So I got the whole towers worth of goal and you can see that in terms of goal now i'm close to 7k goal which is far and away the most goal in uh, in the entire game it's in fact almost like almost double of some people uh, on the enemy team like you see like thresh it's like almost double of thresh uh for instance so we're in a pretty good spot now and of course as saver all you really want to do is just farm up to your items when you hit like maybe two items is when you start to you know start getting a little bit of damage of course three four items and you know, every item after the second item is going to be really good now here's the rage uh just pretty much walked out i have no idea how morgana missed the stun there but here nami hits the bubble so we are able to finish off the kill thresh is now only worth uh, 150 gold after dying four times uh yeah not 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 a lot so here we're going to focus the mid lane tower now here is a problem i encountered with silver if you pop the w for the attack speed uh, and anyone standing near the tower is gonna ricochet onto them, which will cause you to take tower aggro. So if you're trying to attack the tower and there's people under the tower, you don't want to pop your W. This is something I learned the hard way, like right here. And here we are trying to get a catch on Tristana, which I had my ult to try to do that. But I decided to instead just be a bit more conservative and just go for the wave here. No reason to, uh, you know, wait, wait, possibly waste an ult here or something like that. And, you know, we can just... Pick up, uh, you know, that like one and a half waves there and like another full wave here. Um, Sivir uh, is the best wave clear ADC in the game bar none. Like, uh, when you hit like one item plus, like you can it literally Q and like with the W, auto attack the wave like two to three times and instantly, instantly it's going to just destroy the wave. Like, it's just going to destroy the wave instantly. You can never push in a Sivir uh, if she can really walk up and attack the wave, so... Um, that's kind of one of Sivir's biggest um, strengths. And and yeah, so here we are at two items. Now we have both Navori as well as, uh, of course, our uh, Bloodthirster. I'm thinking maybe Navori needs to be swapped with, like, uh, for example, a Phantom Dancer perhaps, because I think that attack speed, you know, is really something that you need. Of course, you get attack speed from your W. Uh, and decent amount of attack speed as well, and Lethal Tempo and Alacrity. I actually, like, you know, I honestly feel that it's somewhere along the border of maybe this is enough but maybe i need more kind of thing so just look at the wave clear here you can see that you know as i said i q auto auto and like the wave is just gone and of course with jungle monsters as well uh, especially the raptors and the crux just camps that Sivir can take really easily especially the raptors because you can just bounce 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 and like you can easily easily just get um the camp really really quickly here i'm just helping zinja out a little bit with the with the rip buff uh but the wave is crashing in so i'm just headed over to get the minions or the two minions and then i'm just headed back for the red buff share. Now Dragon is going to be spawning soon, uh, and my team actually starts to fight. Now here, uh, I actually make a big mistake here. Uh, I engaged the Raven when she didn't actually see me, which is really kind of stupid, and I nearly die for it. So 
uh, of course, uh, I did want to kind of test out if I can fight the Riven, who's 3 2 and 2, I'm 4 0 oh, and 1. And I have like 2k gold up on her, but of course, uh, as an ADC, uh, you cannot really fight a fighter in close range. So um, that was pretty much just a pretty stupid move by me, although I was knowingly trying to test it out. I'm surprised I didn't die there, um, to be honest. So uh, obviously, regardless of how fat you are, it's likely you cannot really uh, you know, duel a fighter. Um, and while that was happening, my whole team was just dying in the meanwhile, and only Nami survived from the encounter at the upper side of my jungle, and, uh, and yeah. So here Echo barely completes his recall, Nami tries to interrupt it with her W, but the W projectile does not uh, quite uh, release fast enough to stop him and he is able to actually reach back to his base. So here we're in a really solid spot, but if you take a, take a look at our team, of course Nami's doing well, she's 0-0-8. Uh, uh, Xin Zhao is actually doing pretty well uh, as well. Now here, okay, before we talk about that, Riven is onto me again, I try to spell shield, doesn't quite work out. And here I'm popping my ult trying to kite her and my team actually manages to reach me in time and uh, actually manages to help save my life and let me pick up the kill onto the Riven. I'm Again, I'm really surprised that Riven didn't kill me here. And I'm surprised that I was able to survive long enough for my Nami and Morgana to come and save me. Uh, but also props to my team for recognizing that I, I was in trouble and actually coming and save me because if I was my team, honestly, I think I might have just... Uh, said, you know what, there's no point going there because Sivir is dead anyway, but they actually do come over and they actually do end up saving my life. So, uh, big thanks to my team for that. And off of that, uh, you know, we also get kills onto Thresh as well as Ezreal. And uh, we're now going to be able to push in mid lane just a little bit. So here we recall get our entire IE. Now we have three items are going to be super duper strong and uh, again, we're like 2-3k gold ahead of anybody else in the game. Even like majority of people are on, on around 9k gold, uh, rough, roughly around there. And I'm on like 11.5k gold, so I'm really, really far ahead. And uh, I'm still keeping up my farm, farming the jungle, farming the minions, farming everything as a typical uh, AEC. And farming the mid lane uh, minions, farming the raptors. Um, making sure just to keep up my farm and, and make myself super duper fed and ready to of course carry my team. Again, helping Zinja out just a little bit. Um, picking up the red buff. And here, um, this is one of the uses of Silver ult, which is, you know, if your team wants to engage, you can pop the ult and run the enemy team down. Now, um, we actually end up forcing Tristana Flash just on the fear that we're going to run her down. But the ulti ends up mostly being wasted. The idea was there, but there wasn't really any execution because my team didn't really... Uh, commit to the engage and also the enemy team wasn't in that uh, bad of a position because they could run into our blue side jungle and kind of escape through that way uh, but the general idea was there and I uh, you know still think that was the correct move uh, to do so first you have to remember that your ult is a is a team buff it's not just a buff on yourself so you kind of want to use it when there's a lot of people around you as well to of course help uh, you know run people down and uh, maybe in team fights give everyone extra mobility here Jace goes in onto the Thresh who is forced to flash away in fear. Uh, we're just taking enemy cooldowns left and right while maintaining our own. Mostly, of course, I did uh, kind of waste my ultimate there. Uh, but yeah, so here again, tr uh, Thresh gets caught and Thresh dies. And here there's ping coming out for Baron. Uh, of course, we can um, just simply grab the Baron. Uh, honestly, I, I say simply get grab the Baron, but uh, with only Thresh dead, this is actually still relatively dangerous. Although now Riven is on the opposite side of the map, so this is a a five v three, um, you know, and it turns out to to be relatively simple because there was no contest at all. So we are able to pick up the Baron. Uh, we back and we're gonna um, build toward um, our uh, Mole Reminder. And since Morgana's farming the mid wave, we're not gonna compete with her. We're just gonna farm up the the jungle. Uh, we're gonna get ourselves into a safe position, but at the same time be in position to follow up for uh, if the uh, you know anything happens. So speaking of which, here I'm gonna pop the ulti, run down the echo. We get the kill onto the echo, and now we're moving on to the Riven, which we do get as well, and then we get the Ezreal as well as um, the Quadra on the Thresh. Unfortunately, um, no no pentakill here because uh, I don't know who died, but somebody died. Uh, when I wasn't there, so uh, quadra kill on Silver, and with that, you know that's gonna be the end of the game. So hopefully you can see, you know, Silver is indeed.
pretty strong, but at the same time not the easiest to play. It does definitely have a learning curve to it. And we'll of course be playing a lot more Sivir and of course making more Sivir content. Um, so I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.